Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to share with you the newest ideas about contemporary river corridor management. Obviously, it's not the result only of my own. There are other four pillars that contributed uh, to this huge amount of work, namely Mateja Softic, Alexander Zinke, Alex Biziak, and also the whole Sea River Partnership as a basic ingredient for this new approach. Uh, before coming to the outline uh, of the contents, I would like to disclose a, bit, a little bit the universe of this course. Uh, we are talking about the Southeast Europe region, which is, if you want, the fourth quadrant of, U uh, of Europe. It's a region with a huge internal diversity, uh, with different geographic, uh, demographic, political settings and uh, bringing contemporary river corridor management to this region is really a great challenge. What, are, uh, uh, what is my talk dealing today? First, uh, I would like to set the scene about contemporary river corridor management. Uh, if you want revisiting the stringent requirements that call for this approach. Second, I would like to dive into the practical application and talk about what has been done along the SEE uh, pilot rivers, and it was really a pioneering work that has been accomplished there. Third, I would like to figure out uh, what can help uh, river management to be more efficient and uh, more effective in managing river corridor, namely using the tools that are developed uh, is really of a great advantage. I will t uh, talk a little bit about the CSE River Toolkit, and then I would like to, uh, if you want, widen up the discourse and trying to embrace what can be new also for other rivers in Europe. Okay, uh, the speakers before me already highlighted, if you want, the great antagonism that we are facing. On the one hand, we have nature conservation, and on the other hand, we have the developmental desires, hydropower, irrigation, water supply, water quality, resource extraction, and flood protection are examples of these developmental desires or prerequisites for development. Obviously, Bringing together these two, at the beginning, antagonistic views is uh, really a great challenge. And therefore, we need an integrative, cross-sectoral, and transboundary cooperation. Okay, knowing that there is a multitude of interests and power structures and the symmetries that are dealing with uh, river corridors, and second, uh, uh, acknowledging that the legal landscape that is, framing, uh, that is framing our action is complex, and also the interpretation of these uh, legal documents is not without difficulty. Uh, acknowledging as well that there are various scientific perspectives on river corridor management with partial overlaps, but there is also a need to close gaps of knowledge working towards sustainability. And uh, taking into account that in the last decade there was the emergence of robust river visions that somehow set the scene for action. And again, understanding that the river corridor has to be treated also on a very specific scale in order to be effective, namely the river corridor scale. Uh, it's really very important uh, to, uh, to have an approach that is bringing all these pieces of the puzzle together. Let's start a little bit from the legal landscape. If you want, from a top-down uh, perspective, we have a series of uh, European documents that are somehow highlighting how we should act in practice. We have the Water Framework Directive, the Flood Directive, the Birds and Habitat Directive, Green Infrastructure, the Blueprint. Then uh, these regulations are somehow transferred into national laws, regional laws, administrative procedures, and guidelines. So you see that there is a first, if you want, translation to, to be used into practice on a national level. Then, if you want, actors on the field have somehow to interpret all these uh, 
uh, regulations and all these guidelines, but there are capacity gaps in understanding and putting into practice in sharing power in order to open the space for a consensus-based solution. Uh, with respect to the project area that I'm talking about, there is also a sort of uh, lack in integrated thinking and planning. Stakeholders uh, started uh, only recently to work very actively together for common goals and common perspectives. Uh, all above Europe, I would say that also effective communication uh, is a key ingredient to enhance effectiveness in river corridor management. You see, coming to the different perspectives, uh, we have the, so the hydro-geomorphic perspective on river corridor management that, that is putting uh, foresight uh, the physical nature of the river corridor. And then once the physical nature is, uh, uh, if you want, lively, then you set the e e ecologic nature. Then you have the river ecosystem health perspective that is somehow reflecting the need to put habitats, a lot of habitats and biodiversity in the river corridor area. Then you have the risk management perspective that is looking at the elements, the objects at risk, trying to reduce the adverse effects of floods, for example. But also, and this is not, uh, uh, and this is the new challenge, the adverse effects of droughts. Then there is the socio-economic perspective. You have a land where you need to live and you want to develop it also in order to make the future of your children more comfortable. And therefore, there are desires to, uh, to exploit the resources that are available in this uh, portion uh, where you're going to live. And then there is the quality of life perspective that is trying to integrate all these demands in order to work towards uh, a more sustainable, integrated uh, management of river corridors. Okay, but maybe the first cornerstone that led us to an, integrate, an integrated way of approaching river corridor management was really flood protection. Uh, because the adverse effects were really devastating and in uh, uh, many areas the disruptive effects uh, uh, led to economic shortages also for decades, if you want. Therefore, uh, there was the emergence and the need of uh, uh, a cross-sectoral cooperation as one of many useful key innovation instruments identified in the EU water blueprint, namely, for example, also green infrastructure, infrastructure and natural water retention measures. Uh, the robust river visions that somehow emerged out of these basic needs, uh, I just give you one example, the Drava River Vision Declaration that was signed in Maribor in 2008 by the representative of the five uh, Drava River countries was the first milestone for the SEE River history, if you want. Ten guiding principles were defined to align river management activities on the Drava River from the local to the transboundary level. Okay, but working with river corridor needs at first a robust definition of river corridor, and at second, a holistic approach, namely the contemporary river corridor management approach. Talking about the definition of the river corridor, we need a working definition. Here is uh, the, 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 the preeminent example, if you want. The river corridor is an area along river banks where fluvial processes took or take place. You see that there is also the hydrogeomorphic perspective in it. Uh, the, all, the outer boundaries are defined by hydrological, morphological, phytogenological, pedological, and or ecological phenomena. Obviously, this area has to be managed in a sustainable manner, and in the Sea River project, if you want, the social perspective comes in, came into play, and obviously human interest is also crucial to be taken into account, and therefore areas of human instruments, uh, human interests are also included into the river corridor that has to be managed. Okay, three main pillars are sustaining, uh, uh, supporting uh, this approach, namely cross-sectoral cooperation, the necessity to connect bottom-up, 
and top-down and to reach local and transboundary spheres, and if you want, as a crucial human element, stakeholder dialogue. Here you have it again, stakeholder involvement and engagement as a key principle, as a principle of work, I would say, in order to enhance knowledge and experience sharing and capacity building and dissemination. Uh, I, I would like to repeat the need for a proactive mindset. We do not need to react on changes, but we have to imagine changes and to imagine solutions for these hypothetical changes. Uh, in the Sea River project, as I told you in the beginning, a very large partnership uh, took really uh, intense action. Here you have an overview of all the uh, of all the representatives in the Sea River project. And again, the diversities of rivers, the Drava River at first as model river, if you want, as a pilot river, as model river, then uh, the Socha River, the Neretva, the Vyoja, the Bodrog, and the Prut. You see, all rivers are transboundary uh, and are somehow reflecting the diversities of uh, conditions in the SEE region. What were the landmarks of the SEE River project? First, obviously, the SEE River project was initiated based on, if you want, the pioneering work of the uh, Drava River Vision Declaration. Then uh, the project aims and the objectives were set. Then, obviously, without a partnership network, it's simply impossible to reach the objectives. Therefore, a uh, lot of action and a lot of efforts has been put to establish this partnership network. Then uh, these six transboundary rivers have been selected. Uh, Cross-sectoral cooperation was uh, set up in order to come up with planning and implementing solutions, as I told you, from top down and also from bottom up. Okay, I will only highlight in this presentation uh, certain outcomes of the SEE River project because other presentation in the conference will go much more in detail and I will give you an overview. So uh, starting, if you want, uh, from the mouth to the, to the source, uh, I will uh, highlight uh, the basic results in Hungary, Croatia, uh, Slovenia, <coughs> Austria and Italy. In Hungary, I would say that the joint interest in river corridor, manage, ma river corridor development has been established and it was a hard piece of work to come up with this result. In Croatia, a first spatial plan for a Drava county was elaborated and this can be taken as a new model for the whole country. In Slovenia, the cross-sectoral interests were aligned in one single and shared and consensus-based uh, development concept. In Austria, consensus was already reached in the past, but here a new consensus was, uh, was obtained to, pro uh, to prolong efforts in river corridor management and development and to evaluate also the results of these 20 years of intense work, uh, which is a key, in a key ingredient, I would say, to show really what changed and really what can be done based on these changes. In Italy, uh, consensus on, on optimization of plant local integral flood risk uh, mitigation was obtained, more on a local level but uh, with effectiveness. Okay, here I would like to share with you an overview of the complexity of the SEE river project approach. You see at the top bar, uh, the precondition, if you want, the mission defined uh, in the Drava River Vision Declaration, taking the Drava as a contemporary river where five, the representative of five states agreed upon this basic need. Then, if you want the translation of this, uh, of this declaration into a project structure, the project structure of the SEE River Project, you see uh, the dimensions here, from a national to a regional to a local level, but also the interlinkages with the transboundary level. The activities were coordinated between this dimension, and it was really uh, very challenging to come up uh, with uh, 
concrete action plans to be realized within uh, 2014 and 2020, either on an international and transboundary level, or if you want, uh, on a concrete local and regional scale. Uh, these action plans have to be integrated, hopefully with enormous success, into uh, existing uh, planning instruments, because on a local level you have existing planning instruments that cannot be, uh, if you want, uh, overridden or uh, outplayed. Uh, the, these basic ingredients have to be integrated into sectoral plans on all levels, into spatial plans, into civil uh, initiatives, into hazard maps, and into developmental uh, plans. Uh, the principle of work I mentioned before, this uh, stakeholder dialogue, this uh, taking the time to talk about the problem and taking the time to search for solution is reflected a bit in this uh, roadmap for facilitating cross-sectoral management of river corridor. I do not want to go into detail. I just want to highlight uh, the two dimensions here, the phases, the different phases of the process, and here the different levels of involvement of the core team, of the representatives, of the key sectors, uh, stakeholder workshop participants, and the wider community. You see that there is a network of activities uh, well coordinated in order to bring in the view of outside and to permeate from inside to the outside with the results of the project. Uh, this slide is maybe a bit complex, but what I want to highlight is uh, that uh, river corridor management really needs uh, to have two uh, learning cycles. One learning cycle is to, if you want, to implement something in reality and evaluate the result of this implementation, and then maybe after years trying to react, or if you want proactively, to set new goals. And another learning cycle that is really essential is if you want a learning cycle that emerges from applying models at different scales and at different levels of detail. Uh, this proactive way is greatly enhanced by models. For example, coming up with river visions that are sustained by numbers, that are sustained by uh, operational target systems, greatly enhance this proactive way of thinking. And these both learning cycles are really essential to be fast, because you know, you have seen, 2050 and 15, we have to reach certain goals on a global level, on a regional level, and on a local level. Obviously, uh, these goals are really very difficult to be reached uh, so far. But we need to be also quick. And the way to be quick and the way to be effective is to integrate not only experience and observation, but also knowledge instruments to uh, facilitate and to boost uh, 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 the knowledge generation process within a group of stakeholders, within the cooperation with uh, experts. Coming uh, to, if you want, to the child rivers uh, of, the, uh, of the SEE river project, uh, concrete activities have been carried out in the Bodrog River, Neretva River, Prut River, Socha River, and Vyoja River, as I announced before. And also here, First milestones have been set for a future fruitful uh, cooperation in river corridor management. On the Bodrog River, gaps were bridged among sectoral interests in, cross, in the cross-border corridor. On the Neretva River, a first common vision has been outlined and solutions for the transnational river corridor uh, ha have been drafted. Uh, on the Prut River, the interest was increased by the stakeholders from riparian countries, 700 kilometers of uh, uh, transboundary riparian situation is a really a, a huge result. The establishment uh, on the Socha River, a, fo a formal stakeholder cooperation body was established. So you need, uh, you see here there is sustainability because a formal cooperation body is meant to act uh, in the next decades. On the Vyoja River, uh, uh, the commitment was realized for bilateral integrated river management. Just to give you a few numbers about, uh, if you want, the 
work of ants within uh, this SEE river project. At the duration of uh, almost two years, a budget of about two million euros, you see activities on six rivers, 14 languages spoken, so a great coordination to communicate, 16 countries, 26 project partners, five international workshops, eight study visits, up to uh, 100 project team members, 10 capacity building seminars, more than 10 action plans, uh, 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 34 national and local workshops, uh, up to uh, 700 stakeholders involved, five newsletters, 210 uh, Facebook followers. You see also this uh, communication dimension. Uh, 1,500 uh, newsletter subscribers, and so on. But if you want more on the emotional level, also one wedding, five dances, uh, uh, eight newborns, uh, a huge amount of liters of coffee as uh, doping, if you want, and uh, uh, an infinite number of friendship, I would conclude. Uh, I would also highlight the uh, connection of this presentation with other uh, presentations and events within uh, this conference, the plenary session 02, uh, with, uh, uh, which will deal with uh, uh, the Drava River case uh, on contemporary river corridor management, so you will get much more detail about contemporary river corridor management, then the session number four and the session number nine. So we'll also deal with these subjects. This does not mean that in other sessions you will get also uh, a lot of inputs that are cross-cutting issues. Okay, looking ahead, and I will be very fast. Uh, uh, we have 10 stakeholder agreements, five for the Drava River pilot areas, five for the international river corridors to work in the future. So there is a concrete step forward already done. Ten action plans where stakeholders uh, committed to work in the future. Ten capacity building seminars to try to transfer the gained knowledge also for the management of other river corridors. And uh, above all, uh, this cross-sectoral transboundary stakeholder network that will try in future to not only to launch projects but also to consolidate what has been done up to now, and uh, several project ideas for the future that will unveil, if you want, in the coffee break. Uh, let me conclude by uh, highlighting uh, the main uh, if, reasons, if you want, to apply river corridor management, contemporary river corridor management. First, and I will read it loudly so uh, uh, there, there won't be misunderstanding. Integrative management is contemporary and reflects the EU policy. It bridges gaps between conservation requir requirements and development interests. Upfront awareness and involvement reduces complex handling of valid critique and objectives at the late stage. So you see anticipation again comes into place. It increases the management quality and reduces the risk of failure in preparing and implementing projects. It increases the support by, effective, by affected stakeholders and the wider public. It improves transboundary coordination and cooperation at all levels. It increases fairness in trans and transparency of responsible decision making. Overall, in a comprehensive ass assessment, it can save costs, which is really very crucial nowadays. So I would like to thank you for your patience and uh, for your attention, obviously. Thank you.